a few words regarding Sister Enid Shettlewood. Now I'm sure many of us did not know her full name. Sister Enid, can you all see her? Right. Now Sister Enid has always been very special to me. She has been here a long time. She's quiet, but she has a lot to say if you get a chance to talk with her. Sister Enid participates in lesson study. She always studies her lesson. Now, she has one daughter that I know of, Jeannie. Jeannie's not here today. Sister Enid is, has also been extra special in the sense that most times she would come and say what needs to be sorted. For example, just today she came and she said that she went to the hospital and they didn't give her the medicine she went for. So I need to fix it. And I am going to fix it. I, <laughs> Sister Enid, I love you. Always have loved you. And may the Lord bless you. Keep faithful. And all of us here will be praying for you. God bless you. of today, tomorrow, and yesterday. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God caused the woman made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man blessed adorned sculpted from the rib of a man woman of today tomorrow and yesterday instinctively caring a natural phenomenon we take the pain handed to us like brave soldiers knowing their faith going into battle Women of today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Those submissive, weak, meek, and mild. A woman is far from being weak. Strong as the largest oak tree during the hurricane season. We sway, we rock, but we never fall. Women of today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Women, the generators of life. Our loins, the harvesting grounds, pain bearing for months, knowing not what is to come. Then when the time comes, the challenge of being a mother is set. As a woman must mold, teach, and love the offsprings of sweat, labor, pain, heartache, trials, love, and care. Women of today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Hell hath no fury like a woman's wrath. Con coincidence that we are or we are? I think not. For God has created us exactly how we should be. And we are exactly that. Women of today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the lord rises upon you the lord will be your everlasting light and your god will be your glory women of today tomorrow and yesterday radiant bold fearless grounded captivating elegant compassionate brave daring brilliant breath taking virtuous hypnotic fierce a force to be reckoned with we are the women of today tomorrow and yesterday thank you very much sister dent and i'm going to tell your father that you will not be coming this week 
When she goes to America, will she get, get to expose that talent? Church is not the same. She might not get to expose that talent. We need her here. But as she goes, there's nothing, there nothing we can do but pray that she will continue in the faith. We will continue with just four more fearless women in the Bible. Have you ever heard about Jeersheba? Jeersheba from the Bible? Well, she was the daughter of King Joram, gripped by the power of motherly instinct. She fled danger in order to protect her son from death and help to preserve the future of Israel. We heard about Deborah, or speaker for Divine Hour. Her middle name is Deborah. And of course, we know that Deborah was a prophet and judge to Israel. Deborah is known for her wisdom, courage, and comp compassionate zeal for justice. Miriam, that's Moses' sister, she displays remarkable intelligence and confidence. She not only helped save her brother life, but also helped set Israel deliverance in motion. Nehomi, mother of Jerusalem, she's the wife of Imalek, lived in Bethlehem with her two sons, Midian and Kilion. Naomi's life illustrates the power of God to bring something good out of bitter circumstances. So we're going to look again at some of our women who are seated right here. Sister Bernice Duffrey, she's a member of this church for over 40 years. She has served as a deaconess, currently serving as assistant head deaconess, Sabbath school teacher, assistant woman ministry leader. She's an usher, and she was also a member of the choir. Sister Valerie Colley is a member of this church since the year 2000, but I've been a Seventh-day Adventist since 1969. She has served with dedication for 48 years. She has served in the health ministry department. And for those who have been to camp year after year, you can attest, you can testify that Sister Colley is always there to nurse your headaches, your belly aches, some of you eat too much. Sister Colley is the nurse on call at camp. Sister Marjorie Campbell, that's much. She's a member of this church, 1959, that is 58 years. She currently serves in the welfare department, and she's a member of the Remnant Choir. Sister Jennifer McDonald, she has been a member of this church since 1978. She has served faithfully for 39 years. She has served as a deaconess. She is currently or one of the Bible workers for our church, and she's currently serving as the Assistant Family Life Director. She was a member of the Senior Church Choir, and she was also and still a member of the Welfare Now Community Services Department. Sister Miranda Dobbs, member of this church from 1992, that is 25 years. She currently serves in the Welfare Department she sings on the church choir. She was a member of the Remnant Choir, and she's a deaconess. She's still a member of the Remnant Chorale. I think so. Okay, at this time, we'll have sisters Valerie and brothers. Brown. Sister Valerie Brown. Sister Valerie Brown. She's a member of this church for 34 years and she has served as a deaconess. She's a very quiet, one of the quiet ones, Sister Valerie Brown. Okay. At this time, sisters and brothers, Benny Downs, Attila Graham, okay. Janiel Warren, Kevin and Jacqueline Coy will now share their experiences about these women. After which, Brother Shippy will do what he does, one of the things that he does best, with his saxophone by serenading the ladies with beautiful music. Sister Benny Downs, Attila Graham, Janiel Warren, Kevin, and Jacqueline Coy will now come forward.
Sister Quidley, you're not getting away. Sister Doctor train you to come, Sister Quidley. passed away and just a few days before the passing of my mother my mother asked her to take care of me and trust me brethren she has been doing a great job with encouragement some of the time when I'm going through my crucibles I don't know how she feel it but I can always look out for a call Keisha are you okay trust me she's always there to pray for me and one of the things I admire most about her is that she keeps my prayer life going. Many a time she called me, Mr. Keisha, this is what is happening with somebody. Let us pray about it. She's always praying, so I give God thanks for you. Amen. Amen. The doctor have made a big impact in my life as well. You know, when I came to this Glendivan Seminary Adventist Church, there's persons here, ladies here, who I considered my mom. I lost my mom in 19... 94 and I always say I want to adopt somebody as a mother and honestly I've been adopted by a few mothers here and Sister Docker is one of them and she's a woman of prayer I can tell you Skisha said that she's a woman of prayer she's a woman of faith she's also faithful she's even faithful in the fact that this afternoon she was supposed to be here for to be honored and she slipped away to go and do communion that's how faithful she is She's always giving of herself, expecting nothing. She's, she's so full of encouraging words. She gives me encouragement even at times when I didn't even expect that she'd know that I need encouragement. She would say something to me and I was like, who told her that? You know, she's good, she's a good person, very faithful, very loving, very thoughtful, and very humble. Yes, that was on my list. Thank you. <laughs> she's very humble and very soft-spoken. And don't let the soft-spokenness fool you. She's a strong woman. And I admire her so much. We love you. Good evening everyone. I was assigned the task to speak about my grandmother and someone I considered my grand aunt. No, starting with Auntie Madge as I address her. I have grown up in the hands of this woman for almost 18 years now. I have observed how wonderful of a woman she really is. She's an amazing mother. She would give you her very last if it came to the test. My grandmother who has always been there for me, a person I consider my rock. No matter what I'm going through, she'd always be like, Till you need to pray about it. You need to talk to God, just leave it in his hands. She taught me not to have a heart of fear. I've seen numerous things going on in our community shots firing men outside and all these things and if she has to get home she's walking she said god never give you a heart of fear keep on going and if any of you had ever had the pleasure of tasting her cooking you would understand <laughs> you would understand where a lot, a lot of the love comes from she's a very humble woman both of them are they are phenomenal women they are truly children of god and if I needed to use anyone as an example for how I should represent God, how to be a proper child of God and keep the faith, I would use them. I love you both. Uh, 
I'm, I'm here to speak about my church mother, Sister Valerie Colley. Unfortunately, I'm contagious, so I can't get any closer. <laughs> so um, the first encounter I had with Sister Colley was um, first memorable encounter, that is, is at Albert Town. We went on a hike, and I hurt my leg. So everybody know Sister Colley, a camp nurse. <laughs> so she, um, she had to nurse my leg. Because I was unable to, to go anywhere else, I became the assistant nurse. And it was at that time I realized it takes, it takes a certain, certain level of, 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 of attitude and, and a certain amount of characteristics to become a nurse. And that shows you what, what an individual is, is really like. Sister Carly has always motivated me. So uh, she is my family. I don't consider her family. She is my family. And I'm sure uh, many other persons in church also feel the same way. We know that she has the ability to produce greatness, Brother Carl also, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, so um, I just want to say that um, I, don't think, I don't think I'd still be in church if um, if it wasn't for Sister Carly, uh, along with many other women of church, of course. But uh, um, I can't find enough words to, 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 to say how much I truly love Sister Carly and how much I hope that she see um, 40 or more years of church. <laughs> uh, thank you, and uh, God bless you. All right, I am going to. There she is. Okay, Miss Valerie. We, you will know her, Sister Brown, but we call her Miss Valerie. Now, my mom, my mom, had had us when she was young, and um, she had to work. I remember I was about ten. I don't know if. Younger than that, I was alone, but I remember I was 10, and Karen, younger than I, and she had to leave us there. And Miss Valerie is the one that looked over us. She makes sure that we are all right. We were the ramping type. We jump on the spring bed and pop down the anger. And Miss Valerie makes sure that we clean up back before mommy come. And if you have need food to eat, you know, she would always be there. Uh, she, she... She had one son that she had passed on now. He was my first brother. I keep telling Ricky, say, I have a brother before him. Everywhere I go, I have Curtis with me. I remember teaching him to swim, you know. Miss Valerie is, is my mom as well because she always, look out. she's quiet, but she see things. And she would see you one side and tell you how things will stay. And, and she would recognize that you want something. Even if, you know, sometimes me, me want something, I mean, go on like me no know. I mean, go on, Miss Valerie. I mean, just say, Kevin, come here. And she give me exactly what I want. And, you know, you know, you know, you know, by the half you beg, Miss Valerie, she, she know that Kevin needs something and he help out Kevin. So she's my mom, and I love her very much. And Miss Valerie, don't worry. Kurt is not there, I'm there, you hear? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the God-fearing, praying people person, Miss Jennifer. Um, I call her mommy. I realize over the years that a number of people person doesn't know that she's not my mother. As a matter of fact, persons have said to me that I thought that you were the daughter and Kevin was married to you, right? Um, and maybe because we are a little in body and somebody tells me that I look like Kedeen. Well, I don't know what my father or Sister Mac was doing. <laughs> but here we are. About 21 years ago, I came to Montego Bay. And um, I met this young man and he took me to meet his mother. And anybody remember Sister Mac a long time ago? 
Anybody can tell me how she was? Roof man? Yes. No man, you look yourself and now. Yeah, the Lord has been working on her. But she was the type of person that she speaks her mind. I remember, like, like as Kish Kishana said before, when I just met Kevin, I, I had a nice little suit. I liked long clothes, but they were close. And I remember she came to me and she told me that that clothes is too close. I didn't have a problem with it. It was mine, right? But as young person, she has been there for me. She has been my mother, away from my other mother. And um, I, for a while, I did not have any blood relative in Montego Bay. So, but I did not feel alone because I had another mother and I had sisters and brothers and I had a husband. Right? So it's, over the years, we have prayed together. She's somebody I've gone to, and we have sat down and spoken. There are times when we had clashes, mother and, mother and daughter-in-law, right? And uh, we have had clashes, but we have learned to work through that. We have learned to pass that. And um, I'm hoping that we have set an example as mother-in-law and daughter-in-law that others can see, because people tend to say that, Mother and daughter and I can agree. But well, we hope that we have changed that. But she has been somebody who has, she prays. She prays and when you don't even know she's praying for you. And whatever it is, she believes. She has believed in me and she has so much encouraging words to share with me. And I just want to recognize you, Miss Jennifer, and thank you for being there. Thank you, Mommy, for always being there. And I know that you will continue to be there because I'm not leaving this family. No. All right? <laughs> Can I get a little talk, Suzette? I, I was really supposed to just play, but you know, I can't really just not talk. You know, a mic in front of me is a very dangerous thing. <laughs> but notwithstanding, anyone who knows how I feel about my mother would know that on a day like this, I have to say something about these, these ladies. You know, the, the Bible is a little bit biased in terms of how it speaks more predominantly about men. And men somehow have gained pride of place in the Bible, and it is to them whom God has given the order of his prophets and priests, and so on. But interestingly for me, I think men also have given God more talking and have been more disobedient and given God more headache. It's interesting also that on important matters, like when the gospel of salvation was to be fully revealed, it was to a woman that it was first revealed when Mary saw Jesus Christ resurrected. All the 12 disciples were men, were secondary to that revelation. And so I say what I like about women more than anything else is this gift that God has given to you all. And that is the gift of discernment. Men don't really have that so much. Women can just know that something is wrong, especially if they have children. A woman can see her child come in and say, what's wrong with you? And no matter what the child says, mommy, me, all right. The lady will say, no, something wrong with you. How they know that? Only God knows. A woman can know how to get up in the middle of the night and pray for somebody who just comes to her mind. There was no telephone call and there was no angel descending. There's just something magical in their capacity to, to be intuitive about the important needs. And even in the church, many of us, including myself, have survived on the prayers of godly women like you. I pray that you continue to hold us up. We're younger. And as we continue to show your respect, this song says, Sight beyond I see. That's pretty much who you are. You are able to see beyond what the eyes alone can see. And so it's done by a woman and I'm going to play it for you. Yeah, 
Kevin is supposed to have a sound check for me in there. Uh, yes? No, Kevin is supposed to just press play. But um, <laughs> it's having difficulty. Turn it up, Kevin.
Thank you so much, Brother Roger Shippey. So we have just looked at some ladies, and we're going to continue. And as we have up here, we have Sister Nerva Gray, member of this church from 1992, 39 years. She served as an adventure leader. Sister Nerva Gray, member of this church from 1992, 39 years. She served as adventure leader, Sabbath school teacher. Currently, Sabbath division, Sabbath school teacher, a deaconess, and a member of the church choir. Sister June Douglas has been a member of the church for 28 years. She is currently serving as one of our Bible workers, and she is a deaconess. Just to let you know that we have 19 persons, but we only have 17. Two is not here, and those names are Sister Carla Lee Ambersley and Sister Daphne Lawrence. Lawrence, just to make you know, all right? So we have Sister Esmeralda Campbell. She is 91 years of age, that's her age, and she has been a member from 1969, that is 48 years. And she's a very quiet person. And during that time, she has gone on the field with Brother Dobbs, I was told, and she has also visited the shut-in. So for those who don't know Sister Esmeralda Campbell, she's to my extreme left. That's Sister Campbell there. Sister Hodges. She has been a member of this church for over 50 years. She has served as a deaconess and as a welfare in the welfare department. Sister Rose Lewis, and she's to my extreme right, I think, right here. Sister Lewis. She's a member of this church for over 30 years. Sister Ika Campbell, a member of this church for over 40 years. She has been a master guide, and she's currently a church choir member. Sister Altia Campbell, deaconess, and she's a member of the church choir. She has been here since 1989, that is 28 years. So, we will get some more thoughts of the impact that some of these ladies has from Sister Joan Carr. Leroy McDonald Jr. Maxine Campbell. Okay, so Sister and Joan Carr. George Downs. Sister Joan Carr, Leroy McDonald Jr. Maxine Campbell. Robert and George Downs. So at this time. Sister Nerva Gray, affectionately known as Miss Whoopi. <laughs> no, she came into my life over 20 years now. I wouldn't call her a mother, but I'll call her my big sister. No, I have known her to be a strong person, strong physically. I can beat upon her if I want to, and strong physically, I mean spiritually. No, she's a jovial person. You can say things to her without her taking it as with a thin skin. She's like that. She is a praying mother. She raised four boys in this church and she has always been praying for them. I have the privilege of helping her to raise the last boy. <laughs> no, um, what else can I say about her? She cries a lot to God. And I can tell you, Sister Gray, that God hears your cries and he sees your tears. And one day in his time, he will make you at peace. I love you, Sister Gray, and I know that many mothers, many girls, young girls here also love you. And I trust 
that you will keep faithful to the Lord so that when he comes, we all may go home to meet him. Evening Church, I'm here to talk about Sister Altia Campbell. It, wait, wait, give me that look. I know I have out, kind of outgrown and got big, but um, Sister Campbell is like another Miss Valerie in our family. She's my, she's my mom's friend. And growing up, these are persons we look forward to because we grow up, we never have much. And a lot of time, mommy would just send me across and we just go over to Campbell and a lot of nights dinner. You understand? So we, we, so, so we wanted to tell you that um, even though I'm outgrow, you might have like that I'm a pastor, we still love you. And we appreciate the fact that we get big now, we on the same choir with her. So. But Sister Campbell has been one of those strong ones. Even though her husband has passed, she has still be here, she hold up the faith. And a lot of persons can attest to that. I just want to let you know that we still love you. You're one of the great moms too. And I appreciate you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am here to say something on behalf of Sister Rose Lewis. Stand up, Sister Rose. Sister Rose has been here for a number of years. She's been here for 30 years she said. But Sister Rose is a person, she hardly speaks. But I remember the days when Sister Rose used to sing on the choir, when Sister Lo used to direct, then Brother Carr, we were singing on that. I was singing on that choir too. Then I remember when she started singing on the, 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 the church choir then, with Brian as the director. Then I don't know what happened and she stopped on the choir, but every time Sister Rose saw us singing, she would be very happy. And whenever she sees me, she would tell me, "Why me love on the choir singing? Oh, the choir sound good." Sister Rose, I love you. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. I've known Sister Ajit for a long while. I've known Sister Ajit for a very long while. Sister, Sister Ajit is like a mom to me. You could sit with Sister Ajit and say anything. And you get a mother and a son come through. I have many moms in this church. In the past, who sat me down. I could speak with them like a mother and a son. And that's what kept me in the church from here until now. Sorry. Sister Ajis is a very kind and loving person. She loves to share whatever she had. Sister Ajis also is a very hard working person. I've worked alongside her for a long while, along with Mama Allen, that Sylvia along with Sister Rhoda Harvey, Sister Hodges, my 
Mama, whenever she have a task to do, she's also, she's also a very early bird as well. And on Wednesday, she will be here early. And she want to be the last friend to leave. If I don't step in and say, Mama, it is time for you to go home, she will never leave until the task is finished. Likewise, on a Friday, she will be very early as well to prepare lunch for Sabbath lunch. Sister Ajis also is a very active babe. When I say babe, many may not understand because the age. But when Sister Ajis usually lived by Stone Valley Road, Sister Alice Ajis would be at here and everywhere. Virgin, she miss you. And I also miss her as well. And I'm also very sorry to say something like this. I, I'm worried about her and I fear like what goes down with Sister Martin. She always reminds me about Sister Martin. And the reason why, because she lived far in the very cool hills of Palm Heights. She cannot be able to be up and down amongst us as before. And that's what worries me. Because Sister Martin departs from us because of loneliness. And I fear the same thing may happen as well. And as Sister not a sister, as, mm, as Miss Lou would say, my child, walk well, good. Thank you. I now invite Brother Leroy McDonald and Brother Dobbs to come forward. Good evening, brethren. I stand here this evening to say a few words about Sister Esmeralda Campbell. To me, she has been a member of this church for so many years now. And I can attest that she's always a role model to especially the young folks. Many of the younger ones they have not been so close to her as they should. But I can attest and I can tell you brethren that Sister Campbell is a no-nonsense woman. She is spiritually strong, and throughout the years, I have admired her and her spiritual journey helps me to be more spiritually grow as we go along this life journey. You might see Sister Campbell, but getting close to her, then you would know who Sister Campbell, who is affectionately called Sis, the kind of person who she is. Sister Campbell, let me hope and trust that you will continue to grow on the paths of righteousness. You will continue to lift up the banner of Prince Emmanuel High. And as a role model for our young people in our church, and not only the church, but also in the community in which you live, I am sure that if each young person would take a page out of your book, I am sure they will have nothing to regret but all to rejoice at the end of their weary days here on earth. Sis, continue to go forward in faith. Remain strong. Keep sweet in the Lord 
And I am sure that on that great getting up morning, all of us will go forward rejoicing in the full and free salvation of which the Lord has prepared for us. All right. Um, come, Sister Campbell. Come and stand up beside me. Oh, you can't stand up. Yeah, man, and Sister Douglas. Two of them. All right. Because of the foot. Just see where you are. Um, Sister Ica Campbell, Sister June Douglas. I, when I came here in eight. When I become a member here in 87, Sister Campbell was here. Um, June came in a little after because she's doing 28 years here and I'm doing 30 something. All right, Sister what is it, June, miserable. No, you're not. You're not. No, is that right? We do Bible work. We do Bible work. But very serious on his work. Love the Lord. And no nonsense. Why, may I tell you the truth? When a man from my wife meet, <laughs> you better make sure everything right. <laughs> because if them decide, so they might come to you, you know, they might come, and they might tell you as it is. And may I tell you, <laughs> my hope the Lord comes soon so that they can part. <laughs> But, but, Sister Douglas loved the Lord. They loved the Lord, and I admire them on the battlefield. They are the church Bible instructor, and they are very committed. Sometimes when I talk to them about certain things, they are way ahead of us. And uh, I just want to say to you, Sister Douglas, keep on keeping on, trust in the Lord. One day it will. We know you're not married yet, and... Uh, She's from Portland, and um, she went back the other day, and I told her that, you know, she takes so long to go back to Portland, because you know what happened? Let me tell you, I'll see you something now. She carried the burden to go to Portland, you know, and before she said she didn't remember the part, she lost the burden in them. <laughs> so, so, me tell her, I said she should go back up a little more half thing, so that if we have to go, she know the way. Right? <laughs> and here, keep up, keep on, Anna. The Lord bless you. Don't leave, don't leave. Sister Ica Campbell, I came here and saw her when I became a master director of the club, she was like, she became a member. Um, she's an invested master guide, and she taught some classes. And uh, let me tell you about Sister Campbell. When I used to be director, they have to fulfill all the requirements. So if it's overnight pack camp, they have to be a part. It's not the kind of best. I remember I take them to Sunday Bay one Saturday night. And the morning we had to go to Kellingworth. So we walked through Montpelier in Sunday Bay, go to a place they called Rooster Hole in North Tokyo. Now, Sister Campbell, no love cow. And we are carrying them, she have to pass the cup. And may I tell you, sir, it was. A, she cried. And she said, Oh, me take her from church and carry her come a bush with cow, interfere with them. But she have to pass the cup. You went to Blue Mountain? Mm -hmm. yeah. And she went to Blue Mountain 92. And, and Love Has Leap. Now, Love Has Leap, I can tell you about Sister Campbell. Pastor Bowers was the pastor here. Now, we take all campers from Newell to love us, leave Sister Thomas. But we said to us like Sister Campbell, Sister Ida was here. And I said, we said to them, Sister Julian, that they cannot go down love us, leave, but they can stay up and wait until we come back. Sister Campbell decides that she had go down there. Brother Seymour Green carry a keg of water. 
and we say, Brother Green, you don't need the water. And I say, Brother Matt, they might not need it. I say, nobody is not going to help you, and you don't need it. Brother Green, carry it down there. When we enjoy ourselves, West Indies and I think England was playing cricket. And Sister Bowers came down to went down. And Pastor told us, you know, that he tell him something. Now he come down. So everybody, they come down, some stay up. And the joke part now, we finish now and we decide to come up. Pastor said to me, I'm big, since I was in charge of the camp. Brethren, make we stay back and give them some time to go. So we did that, listen cricket, you know, and I watch the water. Pastor said, time for leave now, so we start. So we meet the pastor. What the score, brother Biggs? That's all interesting, I cricket. So when we reach a party, him, <laughs> gentlemen, like something up the road, you know, see some bridging up there, so I see like people faint. <laughs> when we reach his sister Bowers, I don't pass on a touch, I hear pastor. Brother Biggs, what's the score? And Brother Green, Brother McLaren, had to cut stick, make things, and carry them up. So we say, no, we are looking for Sister Eka now, you know. So if Sister Bowers follow, I mean, I mean, literal follow, you know, bow. We are say Eka, um, Sister Carly, that's Cheryl, we are say all of them now, them big people, they're supposed to bow. Did you bow? No. She make it straight up. And everybody look on her differently from that. Because she was a master guide. Right? But Sister Campbell being a faithful person of this church, and I want to tell you, when she was at club, you know, even if she's not coming, she's in her jewels. And she loved fried dumpling and hockey. So we used to go up there and she looked about that way. And when we go out and like our Retrieve, we carry her to prepare the meal and we not have food. Keep it up. Your husband go back and road, you come Glenavan. When you go heaven, we all join together. Have a good afternoon. Thank So we are coming down to a close. And at this time, the ladies will be given a little token from the Women Ministries Department on behalf from this church. This token is just to show our appreciation and love for them. We are happy this afternoon that we could celebrate with them while they are alive to let them feel special to know that we truly appreciate them beyond every successful woman is a tribe of other successful women who have their back as the songwriter says a wreath of roses they place on his grave and while he was living there were things that he craved his life as a pauper was so very dim he needed the flowers while he could enjoy them. Many times he was hungry, but you passed him by. He needed your help then, but he didn't try to help when he needed to carry on. Now you give him flowers after he's gone. So Bertrand families, brothers and sisters, visiting friends, don't, don't scatter, scatter roses, roses after, after your, your loved ones, ones have gone. gone. Give, give them while, while they, they carry on. on. You're, You're going, going to, to need them to help you along. along. So, brethren, let us don't scatter roses after our loved ones have gone. At this time, we invite Brother Karim Russell to come as he do the honor of serenading our ladies. So I'll ask the gems to kindly go inside the vestry and take all the other remaining tokens. Gems.
Ladies, God made you special, for there's no other who's just like you. Special you are. Yes, you are all special. Ladies, you have been honored this afternoon for your service to the church, your service to man, and most importantly, your service for God. It's important that we recognize that you as women, you would have given your all for Jesus. But I'm sure it was not easy. I'm sure there would have been times when you felt as though, boy, I really cannot manage and bother with this anymore. It was not easy. I remember, yes, I have to speak about this lady a bit. Um, one of the greatest things she ever told me is that when I'm singing, it's a solo. It's a sing from your heart. Do your thing. That's all she said to me some 20 odd years ago. And you know, every time I sing, I, I try to remember. And I want to sing for you this afternoon, ladies, reminding you that it pays to serve Jesus, no matter what. It pays to serve Jesus, whatever may be tied. It pays to be true, whatever you It's riches of mercy in hell to abide. For it pays to serve Jesus each day. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day it pays every step of the way though the pathway to glory may sometimes be dreary, you will be happy each step of your way though sometimes the shadows they will hang all the way and sorrows they should come to bear on us but our precious Redeemer, each toil will repay. Yes, it pays to serve Jesus each day. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. And though your pathway to glory may sometimes be dreary, you'll be happy each step of your way. It pays every day. 
Sandra Simon Clark to come forward. We have some certificates of appreciation to be awarded to our ladies this afternoon. And, and it reads for, yeah. presented a certificate of appreciation awarded to, and their name is there, for being a stalwart woman of God in service and dedication to the Seventh day Adventist Church in Glendavon. Awarded this 8th day of July, 2017. And we'll just call Sister Haida Hodges. Sister Albert Brown. Sister Valerie Brown. Sister Esmeralda Campbell. Sister Haltia Campbell. Sister Marjorie Campbell. Sister Ika Campbell. Sister Valerie Corley. Sister Mirinda Dobbs. Sister Bernice Dockery. Sister June Douglas. Sister Joycelyn Graham. Sister Nerva Gray. Sister Rose Lewis. Sister Jennifer McDonald. Sister Beatrice Shaw. Sister Enid Shetlewood. Sister Daphne Lawrence. Carla Lee Ambersley. I just want to say thanks again, everyone, for your support, for being here, just by being here and giving your love. So, on behalf of the Women's Ministry Leadership, I am Suzette Hutchinson. And I am Nadine Thomas. We thank Please. you all for being here. Thank, thank you, for you for your, your love. love. Thank you for your cooperation. Your participation. And support. Let us continue to pray for and with each other. For you took the time to breathe into your heart and mind an identity. Your kind of style sets you apart. So be yourself in time as it's all God's design. You are all God's design. And guess what? As I said before, God made you special. For there's no other who is special just like you. Yes, you are all special. So at this time we will stand together. Just stand where you are and we are going to sing side by side, we stand. After which we will ask.
Sister Brevet, to pray for us. Side by side we stand awaiting God's command. all hands eternal God and our Father we are indeed happy that you have taken us through another blessed Sabbath day your blessings have enriched our hearts and we have come at this moment to give you thanks Father for these 19 ladies who have given their years of service to you we pray that not one moment will go unnoticed but Lord, you have gone to prepare a place for us where you will take us to live with you eternally. As we join hands at this moment, we pray along with these 19 ladies that we may all be a part of that great white throng that will be with you in your eternal kingdom. As we go now, we pray that you will guide and guard us. The evil one is waiting to discourage us but lord we place ourselves into your care thanks for being there for us and you will continue be, to be with us here and bless us now we pray for we ask it all through your son's name